let's uh, look at these things in a, uh, in a number of cases. Here I'd like to show you that we can indeed make the dynamic structures, shapes and orientation of the particles. Orientation probably, I mean, later on, but also I will spend quite a lot of time on replication of biological functionalities, including the chirality, which is actually a very interesting aspect. In, in terms of the dynamics, uh, initial studies on that, they were done uh, when the particles have been connected by very flexible polyethylene glycol chains and they can be stretched by changing the temperature and quality of the solvent that was uh, demonstrated for uh, this kind of uh, su superstructures when we have one gold nanoparticles and semiconductors they sort of breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out as well as for the nanowires and, um, uh, and gold nanoparticles. I like this work, but it's not exactly what is true for the proteins. Uh, we can create here sensors and other uh, good devices, but still we utilize organic components to create these dynamics. So, uh, can we see the dynamics of the changes just by using control of the nanoparticle interactions, not involving dynamic organic structures? And the answer is yes. Uh, here you see uh, the uh, twisted ribbons uh, made from cadmium telluride nanoparticles. Initially, we just saw the formation of twisted ribbons, nothing else. And the postdoc looked at it, oh, well, um, just something, I don't know. It took us probably after that three years uh, of work consistently, uh, trying to understand the origin of that unusual uh, shape. And uh, uh, we started with the idea that assemblies of the particles are identical to assemblies of the proteins and for instance uh, helical structures of the proteins are present in tobacco mosaic virus and, and possibly we have similar type of mechanism here with nanoparticles of cadmium telluride as well. Uh, when we started looking in transmission electron microscopy we saw indeed that these nanowires are made from individual cadmium telluride nanoparticles, so they are not crystalline completely. And that uh, raised our expectations. Aha, uh -huh. now we understand that we need to look at chirality. Because in, in tobacco mosaic, the twisting originates from chirality of the proteins. And that was totally wrong. We looked at the chirality of uh, tetrahedra of nanoparticles for a long time. We discovered some other interesting things here, but uh, de 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 definitely the formation of the twisted ribbon and the chirality of the tetrahedron, which is identical to chirality of organic materials. This uh, apex is not the same as this apex, not the same as that or that. So four different A, B, C, and D, and everybody here in the audience who knows or who passed, at least, organic chemistry should probably remember that this is the chiral center. Yeah? We try to extract these chiral particles, try to figure out how they can form. No, this was not right. And the reason an understanding uh, which we uh, eventually arrived to came from uh, intermediate stages of the particles. We start with the small agglomerates, then they grow into uh, larger clouds. Then these clouds stretch in the cross bone type of structures. This is not in applied field. This is in solution just by reorganizing the structures by using anisotropy interactions in the individual uh, nanocrystals. 
And after that, they formed the nanowires. And after that, they spun out that uh, with the triplets. The key here in understanding came from under realization happens in light. In dark, we don't have that. In fact, in the end, we don't have the formation of the twist at all. So uh, we now understand quite well that uh, light here causes uh, oxidation. Uh, this process, this chemical process, forces the change in the particle interactions. And as a result of that, uh, by controlling illumination, we can control the geometry or the dynamics, if you want, of the nanoparticle assemblies. Um, I try to describe here in this cartoon uh, that initially we have flat ribbons. They, and they are made from individual self-assembled nanoparticles. And we illuminate them. That creates the charges. The charges form electro or they result in electrostatic repulsion. And therefore, uh, the nanowire is trying to stretch itself. So the particles are trying to escape each other, but they can't. They're already self-assembled. And the result of that is the formation of the twist as the compromise between repulsion and being already tied up together. Uh, uh, in principle, it's very much alike to the process which uh, in the so, so, uh, you, you see in the supermarkets uh, during the Christmas time. You have the ribbons, you, you wrap up the presents, and after wrapping, uh, the people in the supermarket, they, they do this. And the ribbon uh, creates a twist. That's exactly like this, what we have here. Just in the nanometer scale and light. All right, complexity and simplicity. Uh, let's try to look at what we can do with very simple nanoparticles. These are cadmium SC. They are not uniform. They don't even have a very anisotropic shape. But they do exhibit dynamics of interactions. And that creates, just by itself, very interesting uh, system of uh, superparticles. Uh, as you see in this uh, electron microscopies and in this uh, scanning electron microscopies, uh, starting with simple particles, we can create uh, very uniformly sized assemblies of the particles. In fact, uh, when we look at the polydispersity of the original particles at the b b building blocks, it is very high, very wide. When we're looking at the polydispersity of the superparticles that we have in the end, it's very low, or it's very and it's much reduced. That was simply puzzling to me. I didn't quite understand why it can be, or how it happens, because. The point is that if you start with a polydispersed sample, eventually you have to, if it's random agglomeration, if uh, that has to result in a polydispersed and very bad looking uh, uh, agglomerate. In fact, it is not the case. The question is what's happening here? And again, intermediate stages had helped us to, uh, to figure it out, what we saw that as the uh, agglomeration, we see a great increase of the potential. So as the particles come together, they also increase the electrostatic uh, interactions or electrostatic repulsion. So uh, in the end, the new particle which comes in experience much stronger electrostatic repulsion than the particles in the beginning. That equality of energy, of attraction, 
and repulsion creates an equilibrium uh, system which is uniform in size. So due to the minimum of energy corresponding to this structure, we have the uniformity uh, in the end. And uh, as long as these are very generic interactions, you know, of electrostatic repulsion, Van der Waals attraction, maybe some other attractions, they are applicable to a number of, let's say, of, of materials. For instance, uh, let's sulfide, let's selenide. You can also start with gold particles from the beginning, that mean, uh, or the gold rods from the beginning. They have the same negative charge as uh, the particle outside. They still assemble together, and the dynamics of the assembly really makes them assemble in more uniform structures because dynamics creates equilibrium. Another point here, if you look at this, uh, uh, and of course you can create large scale uh, systems because they are uh, very mono dispersed, makes sense for electronics. But for what also interesting, that this kind of particles are very much alike to viruses. That's another example of biomimetic or replication of functionalities. In case of tobacco mosaic virus, it didn't work. In this case, it does. We just need to watch it and not to miss this kind of uh, parallels. Here, we also have the same uh, kind of analogy, and maybe the structure here has some serendipity in, uh, this, uh, in the appearance. Uh, but I'm, there are lots of fundamental similarities here as well. If you say A, you need to say B, you need to say C. If we say particles are identical to proteins, we need to show their biological functionalities. We can do that. For instance, in Alzheimer disease, uh, the uh, amyloid peptides, they create chains. These chains, or nanowires, uh, also called, uh, they form the plaque in the brains, which eventually results in the loss of co 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 cognitive abilities. And the initial idea here was uh, to look at uh, the chains of amylo uh, uh, amyloid peptides as if the nanoparticles, and combine one and the other and see what happens. And, uh, and I was open to any kind of, uh, of the results. Doesn't matter if the, uh, part if the wires are created in so some specific way, for instance, particle amyloid peptide, particle amyloid peptide, it all would be interesting and good. Instead of that, what we saw was actually inhibition. Here you see that as we increase the contents of the nanoparticles, we see a great uh, decrease of the formation of the amyloid peptide, no, uh, no, let's say, no, no wires. And we also can confirm it by fluorescence techniques as well. So there, uh, the, uh, this happens because in case of amyloid peptides, we see the formation of the same kind of uh, supraparticles as we just saw before. In the center, we see the cadmium telluride particles. Around it, we see the formation of the corona or as assembled layer of amyloid peptide, uh, which can be exemplified by this uh, uh, scheme. The inhibition happens because uh, the, uh, the peptides here, they experience very strong attraction from uh, the core, and they're scrambled. And after that, the nanowires cannot be matched and cannot be formed. Interesting also to compare the performance of uh, these particles with uh, the protein, which actually appears to have the, uh, the similarity in shape as well. For instance, uh, human serum albumin, its function, one of the many functions, is actually transport of amyloid peptides from the brain into the blood and out. 
here inhibition by nanoparticles is actually better than uh, with, uh, with albumin. Okay. I, I just quickly ran through this. Uh, we also uh, were interested in enzyme inhibitors. And for instance, here uh, the hemoxide uh, nanoparticles uh, can greatly inhibit the enzymatic activity of galactosidase. This is the material which is uh, indicative of the uh, similarity as well as the differences in the biological properties of the proteins and nanoparticles. There are a lot of inhibitors made from proteins and they exhibit competitive inhibition, weak competitive or, or, or non-competitive. In case of nanoparticles which have the shape of the plates and spheres, we see the inhibition which can be classified in terms of traditional uh, protein inhibitors. In case of the pyramidal particles, we see a new type of inhibition where the uh, differences in proteins and the nanoparticles can really come in. It ha doesn't have any uh, 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 analogs. So with that, I'd like to thank you very much for the possibility to talk to you about the things I like. Thank you.